just got my advanced digital design test back. Didn't do so well. I better start studying for the next one. All right, let's look at this review sheet. Okay, state diagrams, that's easy. VHDL, super easy. Scan chain? What's scan chain? Better go to the library and do some research on it. Come on in, let's learn about scan chain. on scan chain. I hope I don't actually have to read all these. <gasps> oh, hey dude. Did I hear you talk about scan chain? Yeah, I was just actually going to read it. I hope I didn't have to go through all these books. No, Sounds like some boring reading. I'm actually taking <coughs> ACPE 174. I'm actually learning quite a bit about scan chain. Really? Could you tell me about the history a little bit? Uh, well, it started in the 1960s, um, primarily as a way to test ICs because prior to that they had to test like transistors on a bed of pins one by one but as it got uh, a heck of a lot more complex they needed to have a different way of scanning mm -hmm. you know the stuff that was on ICs and so you know they used MUXs and combinational logic to do that and as they got more complex in the 1970s it really got problematic because, you know, you're, if you're adding all that logic and muxes and stuff, you're generating a lot more heat and introducing a lot more propagation delay. Mm -hmm. And it really started to go downhill in the 1980s as IC started to get a heck of a lot bigger. They really didn't find solutions for it until the 1990s. And that's when they started integrating the scan chain techniques into the synthesis process. Mm -hmm. And that's when it started getting a lot more... Well, I learned a lot about scan chain library. Now I got to get back to working on some projects. Maybe I can find some more in the CTC lab. <laughs> yeah, now I know about the history of scan chain. Now I got to figure out how it actually works. Well, if I was to implement it, I would do it something like this. I would use a flip flop. And I'd, I'd have two, uh, a mux, hook a mux up to that digital fl or D flip flop, where I can have, and one of the inputs is going to be a scan, and then the other one, or the select bit, is the, is chooses between normal and scan mode, or test mode. So when you want to test the circuit, I would have this one switch to the scan mode, which will select the one. Then you can put in the, whatever, you can shift in whatever scan test vector that you want. Then you'd run a, using the test clock cycle. You'd you'd run you'd shift that number in to the register, and then you'd switch this back to normal. Run another clock cycle on the regular clock, and s test to see what output comes out. If the output does not match the input, then you know you have a, a bad connection on that wire. And as you see here, we have a test vector. We'd feed that in each bit, and see, test to see that the output of the flip flop matches the input, verifying that or disproving the design. The steps to a scan path are to set up configuration of chains using the flip-flops and muxes, shift the test values into the scan chains, exit the scan configuration, run a clock cycle so that the flip-flops can store the value, then measure the outputs, scan out and verify the test values for another clock cycle, and then repeat this for each test vector. Oh look, there's Joe Orr. Let's see what he's doing. Shouldn't he be in class? Oh hey yeah, what I are just, you doing? I just built a, a scan chain in, in Minecraft, and um, you know some of its advantages are uh, that it's it's really easy to implement, use, and design, and but it's also very slow due to due to added logic and propagation delay issues. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to Minecraft, so leave me alone. No, what are the advantages? 
Some of the advantages and disadvantages of ScanChain are as follows. The advantages allows the tester to go through all transi transitions specified in the state table, and it only requires the use of a few additional pins. A drawback of this method is that it does not work well in the presence of an asynchronous preset or in the reset is utilized on the flip-flops. Need a break from all this studying. Ah oh, man, I really wish I knew all this stuff about scan chain now, but I really wish I knew how to actually implement it in mind design. Did you say implement? Yeah! Scan chains? You know about scan chain too? Dude, that's what I've been looking up. Here's how you implement scan chains. Really? You just take uh, several flip flops, one for each of the ones that you want to test, uh -huh. and you connect them to the flip flops where you connect the input of one flip flop to the output of another flip flop. Uh -huh. And then you can just feed in your test vector into the scan chain of flip flops one by one. Nice. You have a separate clock that are just for the scan chain flip flops. Uh -huh. And you pulse the clock while you're feeding in the test vector. Then once everything is set up, you feed your normal inputs into the main circuit. Oh, so you can completely test your whole design. Exactly. Awesome. All right, thanks. Man, now I know a lot about ScanChain. I should do great on my advanced digital design test.